So having seen these three kinds of pumps, we would take a look at, now we will take a look at, now this we have seen that how the fluid is pressurized and pressurized fluid is generated. We have also seen the motor which where the pressurized fluid can be, can create a rotational motion. We will see another kind of actuator where it creates linear motion. We basically need these, these two kind of things. Sometimes we can transfer, I mean we can convert rotational motion into linear motion using you know things like lead screws but we can also create direct linear motion using what are known as cylinders. Now in between these two that is where the between the pump and the actuator which can be a motor or which can be a cylinder the fluid has to pass and there are it has to pass in various ways pressure has to be controlled. So various types of components have to be put in it in the path of its journey from the pump to the actuator. So we need various kinds of, typically we need various kinds of valves for this and one of the major category of valves is, are called directional valves whose job it is to control the direction of the flow. So which way it will move? Will it move from the, uh, that is the flow, flow direction because the, because the flow direction is very much related to the direction of motion. Now we want to create motion in, in various ways, sometimes we want to create back and forth motion. So if you want to create back and forth motion, then we have to continuously change the, change the direction of flow automatically. So for using, doing these valves are required. So we have various kinds of directional valves. We are going to look at these three. So the first one is a one way check valve, the second one is a two way valve and the third one is called a four way valve. So first the check valve, so the check valve what does it do? It will allow flow in one direction but not the other direction and it is, so you see how it works, very simple, this is, a, this is, this, this is one of the constructions, there are various kinds of check valves, in fact the mechanical design of hydraulic systems are very complicated, they require very precision manufacturing and uh, so there are various constructions possible but we are going to see mainly schematics. So this is one schematic where we use a ball type check valve. We can also use a poppet type check valve, various kinds. So here what is happening is that this is a spring, this is a spring and this is a ball, this is actually a ball, solid ball, maybe hollow also. So what is happening is that if you if the flow is in this direction then the ball will be pushed along the spring and it will be the water, the fluid will flow through the, like this through the spring. But when it will be, when the flow will be in this direction then the ball will be pushed in this direction and it will come and settle and close this pore, this pore. So fluid cannot flow from this direction to this way while it can flow freely through this. So this is a symbol which shows that the flow direction is this and this way it cannot pass. Having seen one way check valve, sometimes we need valves, you know we will we'll, we'll demonstrate a case of, a, of you know pilot operated valves because sometimes we also want that in the normal condition it flow will be in this direction but under certain special conditions the flow can be made in the reverse direction also. So how do we ensure that? So sometimes we, because remember that these, all this hydraulic equipment can actually be quite far away from the operators, where, where the operator is working. They can be, you know, near the machine, etc. So there are needs by which the operator from a, from a relatively remote action, it, it can operate, it can change the uh, mode of working of the valve. So for this reason, pilot operated valves are used whereby applying an, an, an external pressure possibly from a remote source one can change the mode of operation of the valve. So let us give an example. So here you have a valve, you can see that the, this is the port and this is a, this is a my, you know, the member which controls the flow. This is a spring and this is a, 
resistor in there which separates these two. This is my pilot port and this is a drain port. You know in these valves remember that suppose a pump is trying to deliver fluid through a load and the load is moving. Now suppose suddenly the load gets mechanically jammed then what is going to happen? The, the pump is trying to drive fluid and the load is not moving. So the fluid will immediately tend to get pressurized because it is because it is incompressible very high pressure will generate and these very high pressures can actually be very detrimental they can open they can damage seals fittings they can create explosions etc. So therefore pressure has also always to be in all these equipment if the pressure suddenly tends to be very high because it is in because it is incompressible so the pressure can very quickly rise to high values sometimes if there is jamming. So therefore there are always mechanisms such that such pressures can be, has to be released. So here is a so they are this is the that mechanism drain. So now what is happening is that initially so this is also a little part and this is the port this is this is uh, the okay. So initially normally what is happening is that this, this spring is pressing so this is so this port is these are actually solid parts these are not if you need to, this is the hollow part where, where the fluid exists these are solid parts metallic parts. So normally what is happening is that this is the position of the valve uh, what is that called stem and the. So now when the fluid is coming here the fluid is pushing and, and this will come down if, if there is certain amount of pressure so there will be certain amount of force on this and this spring force will be overcome and the fluid will flow out through this. This, this is the normal flow direction. On the other hand if the if the pressure becomes too much here then it may happen that the force is also here. So the force on the so the now because of the spring force so if you see free body diagram the spring force is here and the pressure forces are here also also on these. So now if sometimes it may happen that the pressure here may move the spring up in which case this will be this will open this will suppose the fluid may pass out from in this way through the drain. In other cases now suppose you apply a suppose you apply a pilot pressure then what will happen now that will come later. So we can see that if we apply fluid flow here the fluid will freely pass and in this direction. Now, now what happens but it cannot pass in the other direction why it cannot pass in the other direction because if let me let me change the color to mark the other direction. So if the if the fluid now starts to tries to enter this port here then this is going to get pressed and this will close this will close. So fluid cannot pass in this direction that is why it is a check valve. On the other hand if we, if we, in, in certain conditions we want that under certain we want to convert this valve from a from we also want reverse flow. So in that case we can apply pilot pressure here if we apply pilot pressure then this whole thing by pilot pressure will come down. So the so this thing now that that I think we have a diagram we have a separate diagram for the pilot pressure so we will show that. So when we have pilot pressure then this is the pilot port so you have pressure so this spring will be pressed and this will actually come out at the bottom not exactly aligned maybe somewhere over here. So now the fluid now this opening is opened these, these openings are open so the fluid will pass and can flow through these they can also it opens they can also get drained okay. So, so you see so, so, so this is a typical pilot operated check valve similarly there are situations where we need to 
change flow direction. So, typically we have two way and four way valves and we must see, so these are this T means tank, this P means pump and this A or B are the load, load ports, load or system ports. So, now you see that this valve has two positions. Okay. So, if in this in this position you see that the pump is actually connected to the port A. How it is going to come back to the tank is not through this, but through some other path which is not shown. So, you see that we, we draw it, there are two, two positions, so we draw it by two boxes. Sometimes we may have three boxes in which there is a central position neutral. On one side we have pump and tank, on another side we have the load ports and this arrow indicates that in which in each of these positions which port is connected to which port. So, in this position pump is connected to B, in, the, in this particular position actually this should have been A if you, if you correspond to this and this should have been Actually, so this means that this diagram actually corresponds to this particular box where this is P, this is A and this is tank is sealed. So, the tank is sealed and B is also sealed. So, these are sealed as you can see. On the other hand, in the next position, see just, just the reverse. So, just the reverse that is now it is in the right position. So, in the right position pump is connected to B and A and tank are sealed. So, you have the other box of that diagram. So, you see that a particular what, what have you achieved that by moving the spool just by moving the spool of the valve you can connect either port A to pump or port B to pump, this is what you have achieved. And how do you move the spool? There are a variety of ways to move the spool. So, for example, the spool may be moved sometimes, you know, when we draw the symbol, suppose we draw this symbol, then how do we move the spool? We, we may be moving the spool by a solenoid, okay. So, we may be moving if we write, write like this, we, we, this is a solenoid symbol. Sometimes we may be using if there are if these valves are big, it requires force to move the spool. So, the spool may be moved by either a so, this triangle means they are moved by hydraulics and pneumatics. If this is filled up, this is a hydraulically moved spool. So, the sometimes these directional valves can be very large and to move the spool itself, you need another hydraulic force. So, this is a hydraulically moved spool, triangle filled. If the triangle is hollow, then it is a pneumatically filled, pneumatically operated valve. Sometimes, uh, so these are very a typical situation sometimes we may have an we may have this means that there is a spring so you only need to pull it in this direction then return is by spring sometimes we may have an adjustable spring so there are all kinds of spool moving actuation mechanisms are there with this valves you, you may also like to move it mechanically just by hand or by pushing something draw, pulling a lever so Coming to, uh, then we come to four-way valves. So, in four-way valves, it is exactly similar, only thing is that now in each position, both A and B are connected to pump and tank. So, in this position, pump is connected to B, tank is connected to A, while in this position, pump is connected to A and tank is connected to B is connected to tank. So, how, so you see that now by construction, this is, this is exactly similar. So, a same valve is becoming two way or four way basically depending on the geometry, the how wide is this, it is the same type of figure. Only thing is that previously we had this one as very wide. So, therefore, A was sealed. 
Now we have this one as, as a narrow one. So, in this position pump is connected to B and tank is connected to A. While on the if you move it to the left, then pump is connected to A and tank is connected to B. So, this is a 4 way valve. Now, as, as I said that you in many cases you need to control the pressure or the flow through the valve. Sometimes you know velocity has to be controlled. If you are moving a very high load, you sometimes want that it moves at only at a certain speed. So, for that you have to do flow control. If you want to and, and pressure control is very much needed. So, we have another the, the other kinds of valves which are called pressure relief valves and flow control valves. So, we will look at some of them. So, this is a simple pressure release valve. So, you see that this is the inlet, this is the inlet. So, very simple this is the drain right. So, actually this valve can be connected across a pipeline. So, if you connect it across a pipeline, this is your drain. So, if the pressure here increases too much, then this, this particular poppet this will push push this will be pushed up and therefore the fluid will pass through the drain so since the drain is at a low pressure immediately pressure will fall so high pressure cannot be created and at what pressure this this poppet will start moving and will open the line to the drain that depends on the spring and this and this pressure can be adjusted by tightening this screw so if you tighten the screw the, the spring can be preloaded to a value and then at that adjustable adjusted value if the pressure goes beyond that then the fluid will be connected to drain. So, this is this is shown by this symbol that this is the relief direction and th this shows that there is an adjustable spring here. So, this is a very simple pressure relief valve. Then we have a pilot operated relief valve see. So, that is more complex. So, what here what we are doing is that very this this operation is interesting. So, initially what happens is that by this spring action you see here there is actually a small orifice which is not drawn in the diagram the person who drew it missed it. So, normally because the fluid pressure here for steady pressure and the fluid pressure here are same. So, therefore, this is being pressed by this spring and this is actually closed, this comes and sits on this. So, the fluid is passing like this. Now, if there is a sudden, suddenly, very suddenly pressure rises, then what will happen is that because this is narrow orifice, so the, so, so the pressure here and here will not be same. So, suddenly if the pressure rises high here this will be pushed up by that force and naturally this opening will be opened and fluid will drain to tank, this is tank. So, therefore, sudden pressure rises can be controlled. Second thing is that if that if now the pressure suppose the pressure rises slowly then that phenomenon will not occur, but then at a certain value suppose this is sealed for example, in this position it is connected to tank. But in this position, suppose this is a this valve is in this position. Therefore, uh, this is connected to the pump. So this is the pump port. So therefore, when it will be in this position, this then this is connected to some pressure point. So suppose we or we might have sealed it. So then what happens is that as this pressure rises, this pressure will also keep rising. And they will balance each other at a certain point of time the pressure here will be too much for this needle valve to resist. So, the needle valve will open and then the fluid this is actually a hollow see the dotted lines. So, there is a hollow opening through this. So, then this fluid will flow through this through this and will go out to the tank. So, even steady very high pressures cannot be 
sustained. So, lastly, we have a uh, we have a flow control valve. Now, what is happening here is that the here we want to we want to control flow. So, you see, okay, what we will do is we are actually running out of time. So, we will consider the flow control valve in the next lecture. So, in the next next lesson, we will actually begin with the flow control valve. So, I will skip this for the time being. This is cylinder. So, we can talk about the cylinder later. So, this this from the last 3 4 slides we will take up in the next lecture. So, now, now let us come to the lesson review. So, <coughs> what have we done today? So, we have today we have seen the basic hydraulic system principles that some uh, pressures pressured fluid is created using a pump and that fluid flows through the that pressure is transmitted by taking the fluid through lines and is applied on the load to create various kinds of motion and we see that it is it is possible to amplify force but at the same time energy is conserved so therefore the velocity that we are we can uh, create gets limited by the flow rate that can be delivered by the pump at that pressure we have also seen that for making an effective system we need to have various kinds of components we need the fluid we need the lines we need the ceilings we of course we need pumps and uh, the actuators the motor we also need to control the flows flow of the fluid we need various kinds of valves and among the valves there are some valves which control the direction of flow and there are some valves which control the pressure and the flow so we we will continue with this we have seen pumps and motors and we have seen part of the valves some bits are left and finally, we will see the cylinders in the next lecture. So, you may ponder what are the main advantages of hydraulics over electric systems there are some advantages I have already told the major advantage of hydraulic systems is that they can handle much more power at using much more low sizes therefore, they are of prime importance and, and used in aerospace we will discuss this in the next lesson. We have identified you can identify the major components of a hydraulic system if you want to build one and three major types of pumps we have discussed it and uh, what are the different ways in which a directional valve may be operated. So, there are various types of directional valves one way, two way, four way. So, that is all for today thank you very much we will continue with this in the next lesson.